my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for how to start a carnivore diet successfully. I'm also going to be taking you through what I eat in a day and giving you a few other bonus tips throughout. I have been doing a variation of the carnivore diet for almost two months now. I've had really good results with things such as sleep, bloating, digestion. My skin is looking really good. Also, people with autoimmune disorders have experienced really great results with this way of eating. My partner Max has psoriasis, and over the month he was doing carnivore, it improved dramatically. So if you have experienced issues with any of these things, then you might want to look into the carnivore diet. So this time around was actually my second attempt at eating carnivore. My first attempt was back in May and I was only able to stick with it for six days, which was really not long enough to experience any of the benefits, but this time around went a lot more smoothly. It was a lot more enjoyable and I wanted to share some tips and other things that I found helpful that led to a better experience. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. My name is Kate, I'm a health coach, and I post videos on a low carb, high fat way of eating. If this is your first time looking into the carnivore diet and you aren't really sure what it's all about, then check out my video from last week. That video was all about what foods you can eat on the carnivore diet, and I also have a carnivore playlist that has some more videos you might find helpful. If you like this video, then please remember to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you're thinking about starting the carnivore diet, then make sure to keep watching. My first tip is to be fat adapted before attempting to start the carnivore diet. This is probably the most important factor if you want to have a relatively pleasant transition into the carnivore diet. If you're currently eating the standard American diet, which oftentimes has 200, 300, 400 grams of carbs, and going from that into a zero carb diet, which is what the carnivore diet is, yeah, you are going to have a hard time. You're probably going to have sugar cravings, carb cravings, and all the other symptoms that usually come along with the keto flu. Headaches, loss of energy, digestive problems, what else is there? Yeah, it's unpleasant enough when you're going from a high carb to a low carb diet, but going from a high carb to a no carb diet is a whole different ballgame. I mean, you could do it, but you're going to have a lot easier time if you stick to a keto or low carb diet for at least three weeks before trying carnivore. Three weeks is the average time that it takes someone to start to become fat adapted. I have a whole nother video about how to get into ketosis quickly. That is more geared at people who are eating a keto diet and maybe fell out of it, but the same principles do apply, so feel free to check that out. Actually, just as I'm filming this, I'm thinking that in the next couple weeks, I will do a video on how to start a keto diet successfully. So if you aren't quite ready for carnivore just yet, make sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss when I upload that video. My next tip is that you have to commit 100%. This is one of those things that you can't really half-ass, although there are definitely benefits to doing a keto carnivore version of the diet, which is what I am currently doing. Depending on the other foods that you are including, you may not get the same positive results. In my last video, I suggested starting with a strict carnivore approach, so that would mean just eating meat, pretty much for the first week and then starting to add other things back in such as eggs and dairy. If you 
try to start this way of eating slowly. It's going to be harder to transition to cut back on your vegetables and to up the animal products. It's also going to be harder for you to pinpoint food intolerances. You really need to set a time frame and hold yourself accountable. 30 days is a good amount of time for you to commit to. If you aren't sure you're going to be able to hold yourself accountable, see if you can get a friend or a family member on board with you. I know that is a lot easier said than done, but that will make it a million times easier to stick to. My first attempt, I was doing it alone, and the second time, my partner Max was doing it with me. Yeah, just having someone there who you can even just talk about it with, and who's kind of sharing your struggle. Not struggle, it's, it's not that big a struggle. Sharing the journey with you <laughs> just makes it a bit easier. If you really can't find anyone that you know in real life, there are Facebook groups, there's a Reddit subreddit that have communities of people who you can talk to about what you're going through. If you're struggling with anything, if you just want to stay on track, check out any one of these. You can also send me a message on Instagram. I will help hold you accountable if that's what you need. Now you don't need to be an expert by any means, but knowing your meat is pretty important. You need to make sure you are getting enough fat in and not eating too much protein by comparison. This was a mistake I made my first time around. I didn't realize that different cuts of steak were called different things in the US versus in Australia. So I looked up a guide with different cuts of steak and I went to the shops. I tried to buy all the fattiest cuts and somehow I still had people commenting on my video telling me that I didn't eat enough fat and that my cuts of steak were too lean. And that's when I realized that things like a porterhouse in the US is not the same as a porterhouse in Australia. So that threw me off a little bit, but that being said, I was tracking that time around and on average my macros were about 60% fat and 40% protein. I think that as long as you're having proportionately more fat than protein, then that's a good place to start. Your perfect macros are gonna vary from someone else's, so just play around with it. If you find that you are really hungry in between meals, then up the fat, cook with more animal fats, cook with more butter. On the flip side, I found that when I upped my fats too much, I actually started to feel a little bit sick. And so when I dialed them back a notch, then I started to feel a bit better again. I know there's some debate on this and some people say that it doesn't really matter if you have conventional meat or pasteurized, but personally, I do feel like it matters. As often as I can, I try to buy grass-fed, no hormones, no additives, no antibiotics. If you're in Europe, then consider yourself lucky because added hormones have been banned from meats since I believe the 80s and antibiotics have also been banned since the early 2000s. If you are anywhere else in the world, as far as I know, you have to be careful if you are trying to avoid these things. Grass-fed beef tends to be higher in omega-3s and other essential nutrients, but nutrition aside, cattle that are fed a mostly grain-based diet tend to get sicker because this isn't their natural diet. And that is actually why antibiotics are used so frequently in conventional meat to prevent and treat the cows from getting sick, which is a very common occurrence. If you're buying grass-fed, then this isn't as much of an issue. The cows are eating their natural diet. There is less chance of them getting sick. But that being said, if you really can only get a hold of factory farmed meat, this is a case where you want to buy the leaner cut and then just add your own fat add lots of it, but add your own fat. This is because even though the fat is good and that's what you want, that's where all the nutrients are stored, if the cow wasn't the healthiest, then all the nasty stuff is also gonna be stored in the fat. Now, just like any way of eating, there's a spectrum. It can either be super, super expensive or it can be quite affordable. I found that buying meat in bulk was a good way to save a buck. This is also a way 
that you might be able to afford a higher quality. Max and I bought a quarter of a cow, which was 50 kilos from a farm that's 15 minutes from our house. The cows are grass fed. I think it was 10 or $11 per kilo. And we got so many cuts of steak, so many roasts. We got all the bones and just mints. They gave us sausages all butchered for us, which was amazing. I didn't really know what the process was gonna be like when we first started looking into it, but oh my God, it was so easy. Free delivery, just bring it to my house. I didn't even realize that farms offered this. So pretty much we got top quality beef for a budget price. We still have a couple of the roasts that we need to finish and we bought this like maybe a bit over a month ago and we've been eating a lot of beef, might I add. <laughs> and the bones are great for bone broth, still have so many bones as well. There are a couple really great websites. Most of the ones I found are for the US, which will probably help most of you, but doesn't really help me, that will list out pastured raised farms in your area so you can get connected with those, make orders like this. I will link those in the description box down below. Dinner tonight is going to be pretty random. I have some leftover burgers that I made yesterday and those have blue cheese in them. They are delicious. So yeah, I have some that I haven't cooked yet, gonna make those. And then I'm also gonna try out a recipe that someone recommended to me on my other video for liver. I had so many people comment different ways to cook liver and I'm gonna try one of those out today. Pretty much they recommended slicing it up really thinly and then coating it with egg and some Parmesan cheese and then just frying it up. So we will see how that turns out. turned out pretty nice. The Parmesan didn't really stay on too well when I was frying it up, but I just kind of scraped it off the bottom and it tasted all right. I think the problem with liver is the texture just, it's weird, but I'm probably just not used to it. Anyways, wasn't bad, wasn't horrible, wasn't my favorite. So I actually had some other food planned for today that I wanted to include in my next video. Max actually went hunting a little while back and yeah, goat hunting. So we have some goat legs in the freezer that I wanted to try to make like a goat curry in the slow cooker. But yeah, he didn't have any of the meat. Someone he went hunting with, I guess, butchered it all, if that's the right word. I have run out of time to include it in this video, so that'll be in the next video. Ah, and another thing, I actually bought a meat grinder slash sausage maker that is going to be here in the next couple of days. So gonna make some homemade sausages. I've wanted to do that for a while, but haven't got around to it. Yeah, so fun things to come. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys. Remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also head over to my Instagram, say hi to me there, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.